All right, we're going to do chapter 6, number 47. 47 says a truck with a heavy load has a total mass of 7,500 kilograms. It is climbing an incline of 15 degrees. So we have an inclined plane, 15 degrees. Here's the truck. And it has a total mass of 7,500 kilograms. And it's going at a constant velocity up the hill. Um, in fact, we know the velocity is 15 meters per second. So velocity of 15 meters per second up the hill. Okay. Then, unfortunately, the poorly secured load falls off. Immediately after losing the load, the truck begins to accelerate. So after load falls off, it accelerates at 1.5 meters per second squared up the hill. What was the mass of the load? So we got the total mass and we got the mass of the load is what we're going to try to find. And we know that the mass of the load plus the mass of the truck is equal to the mass total. All right. So, how do we start? Well, we start them like we start every single force problem. We do a free body diagram for the truck. So here's the truck. We're going to do the free body diagram for the truck before the load falls off. So we want to get its constant state when it's going at 15 meters per second. Remember, you should always practice these before you watch me do them so you can get good at it and then come back and see it and see that it matches the way I do it. All right, so we got the mass total times gravity, so that's gravitational force on the truck. We got the normal force from the inclined plane. Then we have a force of the engine. We're just going to call it F, or the impulse force. So it's the force that's pushing the wheels that's making it move forward. And originally, that's all we have. We're not going to, we're going to ignore rolling friction. So that's all that we have. So we're going to do the same thing we usually do with an inclined plane. We're going to put our axes so the direction of motion is the x direction, y direction, negative x, negative y. And then we're going to take components here. So this component here is going to be m total g times the cosine of theta, because remember that's theta. And then over here, this one is m total g sine theta. Okay. Now in this case, I'm going to make my f a little bit longer. If it's going at a constant velocity, that force has to match that one. So what we're going to do is f net x. And it's going to be the force applied by the engine minus mg sine of theta, m total g sine theta. And those are the only two forces in the x direction. So if those are the only two forces in the x direction, they have to be equal to each other. And since it's constant velocity, that's equal to zero. So I can say that the force is just equal to m total times g times the sine of theta. Or I can figure out what force the engine is applying. I have all these numbers. So this is going to be 7,500 times 9.8 times the sine of 15 degrees. And when we do that, we get the force that the engine is applying by the truck is, I didn't calculate that, but I'll calculate it right now, is 7,500 times 9.8 times the sine of 15. And we get a value of 19,023 newtons. So that's the force that the engine is applying. That's the force F. All right. Now, when the load falls off, does our free body diagram change? Yes, it does, but it only changes very subtly. Instead of the mass total, this becomes the mass of the truck. In fact, I'm going to call it P. We're going to call it pickup truck. So that we don't get confused with total. So this just changes to the mass of the pickup truck. And the difference is, is that since this is smaller, these reduce. 
So the length of our arrows reduces, which means that this force is greater than this force, which means it's accelerating up the hill and we know what its acceleration is. So then we're going to do what we're here after load falls off. I'm going to do F net X. And we find F net X is going to be equal to the same thing, F minus M pickup G sine of theta. But over here, now it's accelerating, so I have to write this as MA. So this is the mass of the pickup times the acceleration. is equal to the same thing as above. But I want to solve for the mass of the pickup, so I'm going to move this over here so they're both on the same side, because they both have mass of the pickup in here. Must be equal to F. I can factor that out. This becomes A plus G sine theta is equal to F. And then I take the mass of the pickup is equal to F over A plus G sine theta. So, I'm going to get that the force I have right here is 19,023 over my acceleration, which is 1.5 plus 9.8 sine of 15. And I get that the mass of the pickup is equal to 4,712 kilograms. But they didn't answer that, they want the mass of the load. But we know we add those two together equals 7,500. So I can say the mass of the load plus 4712 is equal to 7,500, or the mass of the load is just equal to 7,500 minus 4712, or the mass of the load is equal to 2,800 kilograms with two sig figs. There you go. That's how you do that one.